We've got our Smart Add to Cart button for the course done, and now it's time to go through the settings for WPE Store and make sure they're all correct. Go to WPE Store, Settings, and as for eMember, there are seven tabs of settings to go through, but as before, many of them can be left as they are at default. The General Settings tab first. Specify your front end language. For me, it's English. The currency. I'm going to choose US dollars. Currency symbol. I'm using the dollar sign. The variation add on symbol controls what's displayed to add more than one instance of a product to the shopping cart. We're not going to allow this. In a moment, we're going to disable it, so this uh, won't have any effect. You can just leave it as it is. If you have a Terms and Conditions page, put its URL here and check wherever you want it to be mandatory to agree to the Terms and Conditions. If you want to have a lightbox effect on course images, enable that here. It only makes sense to do so if you have a gallery of images for each course. I haven't, so I'll disable it. If we uncheck that, just to see what happens, and go down to the bottom and click Update Options, go back to the test browser and refresh the page, and then click on the thumbnail image, and we're taken to the image itself, which is obviously not what we want at all. There really should be a setting in eStore to disable this. There isn't. To stop this behaviour, we have to edit the PHP generating the fancy Add to Cart and Product display. I'll show you how to do this when we come to Advanced eStore Tweaks at the end of this chapter. If you have thumbnail images of different sizes and shapes, then you may want to enable the Smart Thumbnail option, which will take a central square section of the image so that its shape doesn't get distorted. Products per page controls how many products we'll see per page in the Admin section of WordPress. It doesn't affect what the customer sees. Here's the text we want in the Add to Cart button. You can change it to Buy Course or Enroll in Course or whatever you prefer. The sold out image isn't relevant for digital products. The Products Store page is the front page of the website. The return URL is the thank you for your purchase page. We haven't made this yet, so let's put thank you in here and then create the page. And we'll put thank you for your purchase. Please check your email for details of your transaction. Also, we don't want to allow comments on that page, so go to quick edit and uncheck allow comments. For the cancel URL, again we need a new page. Order cancelled. And for the text, we'll put thank you for your interest. Your order has been cancelled. And again, we don't want to allow comments on this page, so uncheck that. For the shopping cart widget title, I'm not going to use the name shopping cart. This isn't grocery items. I'm going to put your orders. And the same for the shopping cart header. When the shopping cart's empty, I'll put you have no orders. Display Continue Shopping Link. This doesn't matter. If enabled, there'll be a link back to the All Courses page. Do not show quantity in shopping cart. This is important. This prevents customers adding more than one copy of a course, which is exactly what we want. So make sure that that's enabled. I'm going to have the shopping cart appear on the All Courses page, as I showed you but I'll also have a shopping cart page, which I'll call Your Orders. Again, we haven't got that page yet, so we'll create it now. We'll use one of the shopping cart shortcodes, this time one which is always displayed, even if there are no items in it. 
We won't enable automatic redirection to the checkout page because we want customers to be able to add more than one course before they check out. Allow shopping cart anchor. If you want to have an anchor point where the shopping cart is, for instance if you had it at the bottom of the list of courses instead of at the top, then you can enable this and the page will automatically scroll all the way down to the shopping cart when changes are made to the order. I've put the shopping cart at the top of the page, so we don't need this, I'll leave it empty. If you want, you can hide the shopping cart image. I'm going to hide it. Show Compact Cart in Widget does just what it says. I'll enable that. Enable Fancy Redirection on Checkout improves the appearance of the redirection to the PayPal page. I'll demonstrate this both enabled and disabled. So we've enabled it, we'll go down, save that for the moment, go to the test browser and refresh the page, we'll click on Add to Cart, and then on the Checkout button, that's what that looks like. Go back to Settings and disable that, update again, Go back, refresh the page again, and this is what it's like without that. It's purely a visual effect. You can choose which you prefer. I'm going to set it on. If you want it to be possible to save items in the cart for a later visit, enable the Save and Retrieve option. We won't impose any limitations on purchase amounts. Shipping and tax is all irrelevant. Secondary currency settings are irrelevant. The digital product delivery settings apply to single files like an ebook. For courses, this section also is not relevant. Post Payment Processing Settings Enable Use Automatic Post Payment Processing And the rest of the settings we can leave unchanged unless there's a problem and we need to do debugging. Click Update Options. Now the Payment Gateway Settings tab. I'm only going to use PayPal for security reasons, so I'm not going to enable multiple payment gateways. If you have products priced at zero, then enable the next option, which will redirect customers to register on the website instead of going to PayPal. If you use this, then you should also download the free Squeeze Page add-on and use that as the page redirected to for collecting emails. There's a link to instructions on how to do that here. Under PayPal settings, make sure that Use PayPal Payment Gateway is checked. Put in your PayPal email account. Shipping is not relevant. You can add your own return button text. Collect instructions is not needed. PDT stands for Payment Data Transfer. The PDT Identity Token is optional. If you want to display the transaction details on the Thank You page, then you need this. Otherwise, you can leave it empty. To find the PDT Identity Token, log in to the PayPal account that you've specified. Go to Profile, My Selling Preferences, Find Website Preferences, and click on Update. Set Auto Return to On. Enter the live URL of your website here. I've been working on localhost, but you cannot put a localhost address in here. It must be live and on the web. Set Payment Data Transfer to On. And the Encrypted Website Payments setting to Off. 
PayPal account optional means that customers don't need a PayPal account themselves. Set this to on. Contact telephone number. No, they don't need to supply a telephone number. Switch that to off. Support gyro bank. No. Now you'll get your identity token. I think if it's the first time you do it, then you have to click update and then you get it. I already had it before, so I'm going to go back. And there it is. There's the identity token. Copy that carefully and paste it into the eStore settings page. I'm not going to have any manual payment or any support for other gateways, so we can go down to the bottom and click Update. Now the Email Settings tab. This is much the same as before for eMember. You can choose whether to use WordPress or SendMail. Use WordPress. HTML or plain text in your emails. You decide if you want images and formatting. It has to be HTML. Put your site's from address here. Send purchase confirmation emails. Yes, we need to do that. And you can change the wording of the email. Notification email address is your admin address, so that you're notified of purchases. And you can have the buyer's details added to the emails you receive, which is useful. Click Update. I'm leaving the autoresponder for the moment. Advanced Settings. We can choose the position of the currency symbol, to the left or right of the amount, and whether we want a decimal point or a comma as the decimal separator. Number of decimals, I'll set it to zero. I'm not using paper view. We don't need the alternate redirection method or the custom anchor tag on the thank you page, but we do want to enable Ajax on the add to cart buttons. With that enabled, the shopping cart's updated without the need for a page refresh, which is much better. Click update. The Add-on Settings tab. The first section's for the affiliate program. I'll do that as a chapter of its own. Scroll down to WP eMember Plugin Specific Settings. Only logged in members can check out. If this is enabled, then customers have to register for an account before they can pay. You need to put the register page as the redirection URL for anonymous checkout if this is enabled. Let's see what happens if it is enabled. So I've set that to enabled, click on update, go back to the test browser and refresh the page. And now, I'll remove that, click on add to cart again, and now when I click on the checkout button, instead of going straight to PayPal, I'm redirected back to the register page on the website. I have to fill that out and get a link in my email, and only then can I click on that link, and then I'll be taken to PayPal to pay. Try it the other way, go back to Add-on Settings and disable it. We can remove the link to the registration page and click Update. Refresh the page in the test browser. Click again on the PayPal button, and this time we're taken directly to PayPal. I'm going to leave that setting unchecked so that customers are taken directly to PayPal. My reasoning behind this is to avoid accounts being set up on the website which people subsequently don't pay for. You can choose which you think's better. It might be friendlier to have people create an account first rather than being asked to pay straight away. But I think it's quite normal to pay first and then get access to the site and products. I'm not going to use the Download Manager, Amazon Web Services or ReCapture. Click Update. Third party integration, we're not using any of these. That's all done.
In the next lesson, we'll begin to look at the sophisticated coupons and discounts which eStore makes possible.